How you doing, um, it's me again, and uh, it's time for more Looney Tunes for today. Um, I'm, to, I'm gonna play a um, play you a um, a, a, a behind the scenes video about Trey Brown who did the sound effects. Yeah, now yeah, uh, the reason why I'm redoing this one is because uh, um, yeah, the original one didn't turn out very well because it was blurry the entire time, and I. Didn't catch the error in time, yeah, um, so I'm redoing it again. <coughs> yeah, and, uh, I'm gonna upload this first before the world of cartoons. Yeah, and, you know, Trey Brown was a master of the sound effects, like, like, um, you know, like Disney. Yeah, um, he had, like, you know, um, objects in a closet, in which today, uh, yeah, um, you and I might call junk. And then, um, he would use these to, you know, produce the sound effects. Like, for example, um, yeah, uh, the world where had, like, his little tongue, you know, um, pops, you know, uh, like this, uh, um, yeah, uh, me, me, um, you know, um, um, you know, um, Trey said that they were produced, you know, just by, um, yeah, uh, snapping his finger in and out of the top of a bottle, um, on a bottle, yeah, and then, um, and then, uh, yeah, um, you, um, yeah, you can cut a, um, you know, cut a few of those together, you know, and, <coughs> yeah, and then there was this kangaroo guy named Hippity Hopper, yeah, that appeared on a bunch of cartoons, yeah, that had this twanging, um, you know, bouncing sound to his feet, just like, Tigger like this. Drain, 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 drain. Yeah, and Trey did that by, um, by, um, you know, taking a metal fingernail file, yeah, and, um, yeah, attaching, <coughs> yeah, um, it to the edge of a tape, boy, yeah, and just twang it. Yeah, yeah, and, to, um, you know, um, you know, you know, one of my favorites was, um, in the episode, Tweez, that's so, as, uh, yeah, when, you know, a Tweety, um, shakes Sylvester on the wire, um, um, to, um, you know, a Trey Brown used a piece of sheet metal, yeah, to create a thunder sound, yeah, when Sylvester was sh shaking up and down like that, and he was like, whoa, 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 to <laughs> say, so, yeah, and the Tweety's like, ah, the poor, poor, the cat, yeah, uh, you got this thing is so? And, uh, uh, yeah, um, and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you got these fingers all cut, <coughs> all cut in the wire. Yeah, I'm um, saying, so, um, yeah, and they'll, you know, they'll be reusing clips from, um, the other Louis Jones car. So, so anyway, here's the buying the scenes on Trey Brown. <coughs> yeah, enjoy. That's from Hair Trigger. Pony, stuck a feather in his cap, called it macaroni. When every of the Warner's directors <coughs> talked about their careers, they worked with Solo the Man, Trey Brown with great respect, and we're very quick There's to point out how much his work with Sam. Yeah, these are members of the, the members of the studio crew. In Malibu, California. <coughs> That's from Fish and Slips. There's Mr. Brown's Brown only comment was, there. Nothing. <coughs> That's well, Sylvester Jr. Like the right there. Father. They credited him with editor, but I believe there's Jerry Bass. Sound effects editor. One of the important cogs in the studio machine is Trey Brown. Um, yo, know, that's and what it was like department. when they worked with film back then. Side of the camera shaking. Now, Treg was a trained musician. There's Ben Burr. He, he, uh, he also voiced, uh, you know, uh, Molly in the a Wally movie. I mean, Th there's Keith Scott. Benny Meroff, who was a very popular vaudeville. You know, Scott spelled an extra, you know, key for some reason. Earn a better living than a 
traveling musician playing nightclubs. Like this! That's from Showbiz Bugs. This is my favorite scene. He got a job at Paramount, <laughs> actually, first. That, that he was a music yeah. editor and sound mm -hmm. editor and worked there for a short time. He actually <laughs> worked for Cecil B. DeMille. That's from... That's from Adapted.com. I don't know which one's from it. I'll look it up after this recording. Yeah, some sound effects in um, some of DeMille's films in the early 30s, uh, like right. Patra and Sign of the Cross. Right. Treg uh, made up the sounds you hear of the bow twangs and the, for the yeah, arrows dwang. that fired in that movie. Musicians right. made great like cartoons out again. of it because all cartoons are done on music bar sheets. To that rhythms. background is so strong. Well understood, but it was like this guy just had an immediate canary role for improving the quality of the Warner Brothers cartoon soundtracks to a motion picture level. I know which episode that's from. Usually, the kind of sound effects that you heard in the earliest cartoons were, were strictly sound effects produced by musical instruments. I don't know which one this is from. <laughs> what happened with Trey Brown was right, entirely right. different. He would bring in sounds that were recorded in the library at Warner Brothers. <laughs> if someone came quick to a stop, he'd put in a cross right. kit from, you know, a Jimmy Cagney gangster movie that they right, like this. You know, that's from Rabbit of Seville. I don't know which one Somebody that was from. Somebody was hit on the head and flew out the window. There'd be a, a thunderclap followed by the sound of a biplane in a spin recorded for Dawn Patrol. And it was this right. imposition of realistic <laughs> that's sounds from, into the you know, fantasy to the world stars. of the cartoons, which gave them that's from comic the impact. That's from Fast and Furious. <laughs> that's why we got sound effects that... There's Chris unusual. Freeling. He was the creator of uh, Tweety and Sylvester. <laughs> Oh, they were. They're funnier, they were. They're funnier. Right. That's from my, um, your bunny lies over the, the sea. He was responsible for not only putting in the sound effects, Jerry back again. keeping the library of them, and in some <coughs> cases creating the library of them. He went out into There's the field, Mark, um, and he recorded yo, a things, cost uh, for, on a tape uh, recorder, yeah, sorry if I mispronounced his And transferred those name. to film loops. And then he built a whole sound effects library on film that you could cut in where he wanted it. Right. That's from Bully for Bugs. He recorded an actual live crowd at a bullfight in Barcelona. Right. And of course, the bull was a real bull. It wasn't right. a cartoon. Like this. <laughs> I think it was his wonderful imagination. There is your own. On the urgent stage where we were. Oh, sorry, um. <laughs> I think it was his one. There's the urgent marks. Yeah, sorry, I've sorry, I've mispronounced his stage where we first were name. These effects. <laughs> That's from Tweety's Tweety's SOS. That was See. Oh, it's a cool Tweety cat. And he had <laughs> such a wild imagination <laughs> that he could create any kind of sound from what he had. But the Roadrunner had his little tongue been burnt. blips. Right. Stop Tricks looking hasty. They were produced by just snapping his finger in the top of a clock. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 which I already filmed. There was a character, the kangaroo, which appeared. Yeah, I don't know which one this is. It had this um, um, twanging bounce to its feet. Craig produced that by taking a fingernail file, a metal fingernail file, and just putting it on the end of a table and twanging it. And you could move the file such so that more of it hung out over the table or less, and you could vary the pitch. He could make right. sound out of There's Martha. just nothing. I mean, he had a, a That's from Bunny Hut, but I won't be filming. That's from... Just great. They're still kind of so like, yeah, um, that was from For Sentimental Reasons. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, um, you know, reasons, yeah, um, yeah, reasons that which I already... They're still so often. There's Joe Dante. The and all the other subsequent Moon <laughs> kind of incarnations that. That's uh, from Hairway to the Hairway to the Stars. Daffy stamping out rabbit's footprints at the opening of the <laughs> Rabbit Fire, Rabbit Seasoning, Duck Rabbit. That's duck from Rabbit Seasoning. It really sounds somehow like a rabbit's foot shaped 
stamp being squished into ink and thumped on the ground. Right. I like that. Like, I love the things he did with Hawaiian guitar. That's that, where the Looney Tunes boop comes at. That's that, Hawaiian guitar. That was from like a ball bunny. Moving up and down the strings. I don't know which one this is from. There's a Roadrunner <laughs> cartoon called Stop, Look, and Hasten. I already found it. <laughs> and there's this great little sequence. You don't really see the two characters. All you see is this flames moving through the desert. And they do several quick cuts of it going <laughs> around corners and wider shots of the flames. The sound there is a flamethrower roar combined with the Dawn Patrol airplanes and an old motorcycle that's in the Warner's collection <laughs> sped up a little bit. Right. And it was that sequence that so impressed me that when I did the speeder bike chase in Return of the Jedi, uh, the speeder bike chase was kind of like a road <laughs> movie. It was a few minutes long. It was just sound effects. And it was high speed. And I did my best to derive my ideas from the road runner. The uh, audience to sense that it's going as fast as possible, so you have accelerating tones that go higher and higher, but they can't go too high because then there's nowhere to go. So you have to ramp up to a certain level and then drop away for a moment, go to a wide shot, cut to something quiet, then let the sound come in again. The Roadrunner cartoons present oh, yeah, a lot of challenges to ground. There were. <coughs> oh no. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you can skip this part of the video if you want once it's uploaded. And, uh, hang on, sorry I keep saying that. Excuse me. Just a minute. Hold on. <coughs> yeah, we go. I think that. You know, I think that should work. Okay, and now back to, back to the vi video. <coughs> ...level and then drop away for a moment, cut to a wide shot, cut to something quiet, then let the sound come in again. The Roadrunner cartoons presented <laughs> two kinds of challenges to Brown. That's there from Scrabble Day, say, uh, you know, I wish I already filmed. Screeches for stops. Scrabble Day. <laughs> sounds of accelerations. Same cartoon. The sticks of dynamite going off. Same, same cartoon. But there were also challenges like finding, well, what kind of noise does a coyote make? That's from your um, Hoblong Fantasy, which was, yeah, a released on tape only. If you open a quart of acne space. bumblebees, what do they sound like? <laughs> That's from filming four, yeah, which I already filmed. What does an acne bat suit sound like as that's from G Wiz with our film? <laughs> so there were certainly new things to find, and he always seemed to find the appropriate sound. And 
Oh yeah, that's what a coyote having taken earthquake pills sounds like. Probably Treg's uh, there's, there's masterpiece would be his collaboration okay, with Chuck Jones on a very strange cartoon from the early 60s called Now Hear This. And it's all about an old British gentleman who has a hard time hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He finds a I haven't filmed this one yet, but I will. Things. The horn that he oh. finds is actually the devil's horn. And when he puts it to his ear, everything he hears is um, yeah, um, yeah, This one's pretty, pretty funny. Like, this is my favorite scene. Sound right. effects are a form of music, a form of musical composition. And Treg Brown, you know, is that's from a Ralph and Sam cartoon. I don't know which one. Point or harmonize with the music. Yeah. Song's music as composer for Warner Brothers starting in 1936. There's Daniel Gold, Gold Mar. He is providing a lot of the sound effects, musical hits or stings, where he is going to have a piano crash or a cymbal crash. Buccaneer flying. So often what would happen uh. is Brown would leave out a sound effect where he knew Stalling had actually written a musical one. And likewise, Stalling would give space for uh. Brown to add his sound effects. There's a Buccaneer flying again. In his career, he was at the studio. There's a drawing of assignments uh, as the cartoon work slowed down. And, uh, and I don't think he ever was just relegated to cartoons alone. He would always mention the great race because they took a cartoon approach to it. Right. So whether it was the shotgun blasts, dog the rabbit dog, falling on the coyote, yeah, the go go go, which I already filmed. Or the explosions. Going going gosh, which I already filmed. Brown was the master of the sound effects. And the last clip is from the yeah, Bee Devil Rabbit. This is my favorite scene. Hey, baggy eyes. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much it. <coughs> yeah, I'm in for this video. Yeah. So yeah, um, you know, that's pretty much it for this video. So, um, um yeah, that was the uh, behind the scenes about Drake Brown. So yeah, that's it. So it was just Blake saying, um, thanks for watching my video. I uh, um hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again for more. So until next time. <laughs> you know, I guess all folks.